I'd like to welcome you to our online presentation today with Latin Trails. We're here to learn about the most exclusive fleet in the Galapagos Islands. Um, you'll be hearing from several team members today with Latin Trails, but we're going to start with Sylvia, who is in charge of customer services. And Latin Trails has a very high standard for customer satisfaction and service, and it's Sylvia's job to make sure that uh, your clients are happy not only before they leave, but after they leave. And so you will, um, when you book with Latin Trails, most certainly get to know Sylvia quite well. So Sylvia, welcome. We're happy to have you here today. Thanks a lot, Leah. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sylvia, and I'm so happy to be with you. I'm going to explain uh, some, some things uh, so very interesting about our company, about our fleet. Uh, this presents, this presents, the presentation sorry, will be uh, divided in parts. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, the general information of, of Ecuador. We are located in South America. This is a, a small country, but with a high biodiversity. We have three, uh, three areas uh, in the mainland. We have the coast over here with, uh, with two, two parts. The, the Andes with the Volcano Avenue and the jungle. And of course, our main products are for the Galapagos Island. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the flights. Just a minute. The fl our flights, our local flights and the airport at Galapagos. Basically, in Galapagos there are two airports, uh, one in Baltra and one in San Cristobal. Island. Uh, we use we use two local airlines basically with high standards of quality. Both of them, one of them is called Tame and the other one is called Aeroal. Both of them departure from Quito and Guayaquil. Usually the flights are uh, departure early in the morning from Quito with a stopover of 35 minutes, between 35 and 40 minutes in Guayaquil to refuel the plane. And then the flight will take from Guayaquil to Valtra for one hour and 40 minutes flying. So as a general idea, uh, your clients will depart from the main cities, Quito or Guayaquil, at 7 a.m. arriving Galapagos, 11 a.m. As, as soon as we arrive, uh, in our, our guide will be waiting for our clients and will assist, you, will assist with the luggage and uh, to drive you to the Canal de Itabaca. We also have private transfers from the airport to the Canal de Itabaca under request, of course, but we also have this instead of the buses. Uh, of the airport buses. The best time to visit all year around, you, you can visit all year around, there's a wonderful weather in Galapagos. Now, Marcel is going to talk to you about the Galapagos Odyssey refurbishment. Thanks, Marcel. Hello, everyone. I am Marcel Perkins, uh, the general manager at Latin Trails. I'm going to talk a little bit about our Galapagos Odyssey fleet. Uh, these are our, our, our first class and uh, first class premium yachts in the Galapagos Islands. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about what, the, um, what our yachts are like and about the recent renovations we've uh, performed on uh, both the, the Galapagos Odyssey and the Galapagos Grand Odyssey. Um, one thing about the yachts that Latin Trails manages in the Galapagos Islands and operate in the, the yachts we operate our cruises on is that all cabins are above the waterline. So none of your travelers are going to get um, cabins on the lower deck or under the waterline where you only have portholes. All the cabins your travelers would get will have ocean view windows and you can actually open the windows on all our yachts inside the cabin. So that allows a um, travelers to choose between air conditioning or fresh airflow into the cabins. Um, 
if we this is a right now we have a picture of the Galapagos Odyssey. Both um, both the Odysseys are 16 passenger yachts. Uh, we're going to take a look at the deck plans and the renovations. Uh, here we have the deck plans. Uh, we have four decks on the Galapagos Odyssey. Uh, the top deck is the sun deck. Then we have the upper deck. Then we have the upper deck uh, where the, we have four cabins. And on the main deck we have another four cabins and the living room areas. This is a little bit about the before and after on the Galapagos Odyssey for those who are familiar with the boat. Those who are not, this is our sun deck. We actually installed the teak wood flooring recently and the day beds on the sun deck. It also has a jacuzzi area. And it's a great observation platform for travelers when they are navigating along the islands. Mm -hmm. Then we, uh, inside the cabins actually, we we equipped one of the lower deck cabins as a single cabin. So this is this would actually be the only uh, cabin that doesn't have windows. It has a porthole, but it's offered for single travelers who do not want to pay a large single supplement. Basically, uh, inside the, the the yacht, all furnishing is uh, with a teak wood. You can see the floors here. We have wooden flooring. Uh, queen size beds in the matrimonial cabins and in the twin cabins, which is the on the next slide, we can see the ocean views that are available in all cabins. We have a mini bar, small desk area. Uh, we look at the social areas. We have um, an outside bar that we implemented as well. And on the next slide, we'll see the dining area. On both sides of the dining area, we have picture windows. Uh, and in the center, in the center of the dining area, we have a buffet. For it. So this is uh, our inside dining area. We also offer alfresco dining on certain departures. Uh, at least we try to do it at least once uh, throughout uh, every cruise. And the outside seating area could be a good place to just sit down and look at your maps or read a book as well, and enjoy the the views as you're navigating from one island to another. If we this is our living room area. Every evening our guide gives a briefing on what is going to be seen the next day on the islands. And it gives a lecture as well on the nature of the Galapagos. He may choose a topic as Charles Darwin's visit to the Galapagos Islands, or what the, uh, what the research center is doing to repopulate torches is on Pinta Island, for example. Uh, the behavior of the waved albatros. Or certain, and depending on the itinerary you, you have decided for your your client's Galapagos cruise, the lectures will be related to the islands that are visited. So this is our social area where passengers can sit down and just uh, socialize, uh, chill out. It's a, it's an air conditioned area. This is our upper, upper deck bar area. So you, passengers can enjoy a cocktail as they have fresh air flowing from the sea breeze that is around them. The next slide encompasses the sun deck. As we mentioned, we recently installed the teak with uh, flooring on the sun deck. Uh, we added day beds. Uh, there is both uh, an area under the sun and an area under the shade on the sun deck. We'll see that on the next slide. Here we. This is a little bit of a better picture for that area. As you can see, it's a, it's a very comfortable area. And on the next slide, we can see the jacuzzi. So this is the Galapagos uh, Odyssey. It's a 16-passenger yacht. Um, and we would consider it in the first class category for the Galapagos yacht. It's a very spacious, very comfortable boat. Um, the next slide we'll see uh, that we have, we, we can also offer uh, an outside barbecue. We do this once every cruise. On, on, uh, it's, we can offer this on the Galapagos Odyssey, the Grand Odyssey, on the Seaman Journey as well which is our catamaran. We also have fresh towels for when passengers return from their excursions and we offer some really nice snacks as well. So apart from the meals that are all included in, in, during a cruise, uh, we offer snacks when passengers return from their excursions. Uh, uh, this is, you know, it's just a small uh, refreshment. 
this is uh, the buffet area. All meals are buffet on, on, on the boats, um, and they're included. We also include coffee, water, and tea, separate our alcohol drinks and bottle drinks on the, on the boats. Uh, we cater to all dietary needs. If it, we must know in advance, though. Now, uh, if we look at the Galapagos Islands activities, uh, there is a, something for everyone. Uh, on a cruise, you will be doing zodiac rides throughout the mangroves and exploring the small um, reefs nearby the islands to see the penguins or other wildlife species. You have nature hikes where you can see the, uh, well, if it's in the highlands, you'll be seeing the giant tortoises or the, or on the um, coastline, you'll encounter the sea lions, marine iguanas, and different species, and as well as we have snorkeling. We have snorkeling. And um, we have uh, close encounters with wildlife for travelers of all ages. Sea kayaking is also available on the, on the Galapagos Odyssey, the Grand Odyssey, and the Seaman Journey. So I'm going to, actually Javier is going to, uh, our, our sales manager at Latin Trails is going to talk a little bit about the, about the activities on the islands because he's just been back from a recent trip um, on board the, uh, both the Odysseys. So he's going to give you a little bit of a more up-to-date experience on that. I need to Hello, my name is Javier. Nice to nice to meet you to everyone. Okay, I'm going to talk about the Galapagos the Galapagos activities that you can do that you can do in the in the islands. Okay, um, that's them. Um, okay, the, we have some different activities that we can do in, in our cruises. We have some snorkeling equipment for our for our guests. So what the, the activities that we are we are doing also in the, the in the in the sea uh, activities. We also have some kayaking also as well, and we uh, this, the, most of the questions that we are having um, that is it, we need to, we need to pay for that is already included in the price. So what we do, what we rent, the only thing that we rent is the wetsuits that we are having. Okay, I'm going to talk about more more of the details of the of the of the animals that we can we can find in the island. So that that was that was the that is the most uh, interesting question that we are having in the, uh, in, in this presentation. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about more about the animals and the activities, the weather conditions, and also after the whole presentation. So I'm going to to leave the rest of the presentations because we are having also some some nice pictures of the of the animals and the, all all the things that we are going to have there. Okay, I'm I'm going to present. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Esteban, who is going to explain you more about the Grand Odyssey. And he's going to talk about the the whole information about the Galapagos, and after that, we are going to talk about the activities and the the weather conditions, and also the animals that can be seen in the island and in, in the special activities that we are having. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Esteban Bariadares. I'm a sales assistant, and I would like to talk about uh, the Granodes since my adventure I've been last week, since I went for five days. Just like to tell you that it's a really, really first class yeah. It's got 16, uh, coming up with 16 passages. They've got, um, got mini bar. We've got social area within the diner area as well. And we, got, we have, in all cabinet, we have a TV and a DVD. The experience that you can enjoy in an activity is really fun. We've got kayak, we've got, we got um, snow clean. Plus, we go uh, some snacks every time the passengers go to the to visit the islands. When they come back, we have hot hot snacks and cold snacks within for, uh, juices for all tropical. Here's the the inventory of the of the yacht. We got gym, the upper deck, main deck, and the sun deck. This how the renovations we uh, had uh, for the floor. We got light, light brown color, whole new lighting system. We got bathroom doors, new opening system, cabins, new Roman south curtains, social area, shaded sun beds, and take a floor. 
this is a nine pinch nine picture for in all of the spaces that we we have refurnished the Grand Odyssey. As you can see, we got the bedroom, bed, the cabins, we got the um, bathrooms, double the double cabins, the twin cabins, the um, suite, plus we got the um, jacuzzi on the sand deck. As you can see on the whole, um, when you when you coming from the main from the main deck, which is uh, the social area and dining area, you come through to we have four cabins inside. As you can see, the floor is we all refurnished the all the floor is black black wood. It's got two two cabins outside. This is the 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 much more uh, suite. As you can see, it's a it's a king size bed. We got a, a mini sofa. We got two. Um, we got um, the windows. The, the window. Um, the, the new curtain. We got the um, the window view. You can see the island and the and the sea. Which you got the twin upper deck, which is two two single beds inside. In the middle, we have a, a two small uh, kind of wardrobes, and we got a small table at the left side. In front of the in front of the two singles that we have the TV plasma and the DVD. Here is our Galapagos Odyssey suite, which is kind of kind of a double room. As you can see a king size bed, two woods at the side, we got two mirrors at the side. We got a small um, a small living room area with a, a small uh, table so you can sit there, have a a little snack, as you can see the fruits. The bathrooms is all is all brand new. It can it can fit two people in the shower. Plus we got um, the the three bottles as you can see uh, for shampoo and conditioner. Plus five small towels so you can so so you can dry your your hands. Next we have the social area. It's a, it's a small, it's a small size that it can fit the 16 passengers. We have we have books and snacks, sweets as sweets as caramel. We have as well um, biscuits, and you can see there relax for until you navigate to another island. It's quite suitable for everybody: uh, children, older people, adults, and even older people. Here's how we um, refurnish, as you can see in the in the two photos in the left hand side. This was the the old cabinet, how it used to look, and in the left in the right hand side you have you have the new the new uh, the newest cabinet. How it looks, we go, we, we painted different color. We have the windows. You Esteban, see. you were recently on board. Uh, sorry to cut in. Uh, this is Marcel. Uh, you were recently on board. You uh, you you noticed that the, the difference in lighting on the, in the cabins actually. Uh, we used to have to use a little bit more artificial lighting before because we had darker floors, but now we have the lighter floors. Um, I'm sure you enjoyed that, Esteban, because you were you were actually on board last week, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you that um, everything is more lighter now than before. And you can okay, see the floor let's is. Let's take a uh, look at the next slide so that we could um, um, we can check uh, what else has been done. And you can see here that we we also changed the doors in the bathrooms to the cabins. Uh, they used to be sliding doors. We put in uh, actually a little bit more of a what we call a normal system. We experimented in the uh, when the yacht first came out, but the sliding doors would bang a little bit and make some noise. So now we've actually. Uh, Taken that out, and the audit, and now in the Grand Odyssey, there's a little bit more comfort actually in the cabins. Uh, in the next slide, um, we'll see that um, a little bit again. The, the curtains we used to have uh, blinds before, which are really great in, a, but with the movement of the of the boat, it was a little bit noisy. So we've changed them to Roman style cur curtains, and this gives a little bit more peace and quiet inside the cabins. On the next slide, we'll see that. Um, uh, well, the, the sun deck has been completely renovated. It's a, we've just done some maintenance and housekeeping here. It's really been 
It's always been considered one of the best sun decks on any yacht in the Galapagos because of the, uh, it has two jacuzzis, the day beds, it has a nice bar area, and one area is under the shade, the other area is under the sun. Uh, we can see the shaded area in the next, um, in the next slide, where we, and this is where we also store the kayaks. So the, the Galapagos Grand Odyssey, in, in terms of Galapagos, it, it would be considered a luxury yacht. Uh, but, you know, handling the word luxury in the Galapagos is a little bit difficult. It's, some, it, it's kind of like, it's, it's really a, um, it's, it, it, a better way to, um, a better way to talk about the, um, the, um, the yachts in the Galapagos in, in terms of luxury would be uh, talking about comfort because there's not really a, glamour or anything like that in the Galapagos, we would consider them expedition yachts, all of them, and the Grand Odyssey being the most comfortable and the, and the most elegant yacht in the Galapagos, but still the word luxury would not be as proper because it could cause the wrong expectations. You see, both the Odysseys are handmade yachts. These are boutique yachts that were built in Guayaquil. They were built um, by artisans, so everything is made by hand on the Odyssey. So, you, so, so that's something that you actually you would appreciate that it's, it's really artisanal made, Handmade, the wood carving on, on, on the boats has been done by artisans from Guayaquil, which is where the main port is in Guayaquil. That's one of the things we take pride in also about the Odysseys. Although it, it's, um, it's really not been mentioned, it, these are 100% made in Ecuador by uh, some of the best uh, craftsmen in wood and uh, the hull as well. It's been welded uh, together with marine steel, but again, with the, with, um, with the more traditional style. Here we have the social area. This is the inside dining area. We also offer alfresco dining. Uh, you can notice also the, the floor has been a, a little bit lightened up. Um, again, ocean view throughout the whole boat and in all that social areas. In another um, image of that, we ha also have a wine bar. Uh, and we have a small library for uh, travelers who want to pick out a book about the islands or maybe one of the latest novels. And we do, when it comes to Books about the Galapagos, we have a good stock, and we have a book exchange, but for non-Galapagos books. We have a small uh, computer area. We can't say that we have internet. Uh, we've actually removed it because um, being at the equator, um, you really need a very, very large antenna, which is actually not possible for a boat, for a small yacht in the Galapagos to have an internet. Uh, so that's one thing that it is important that you tell your clients that on any of the smaller yachts, it's not really going to be possible to offer them internet. On uh, the next picture, we actually have um, this is the social area, and it's it, it's it's the the briefing of the guide. It's done in an informal manner as a conversation, so travelers can ask questions at all times, and it and and the wildlife of the islands and the lectures are given out in a presentation format that it's easy for everybody to understand. It's more like a forum where you actually get to ask questions and interact with your guide and really get to learn a little bit more about the Galapagos. It's a very familiar environment as well. Although the, and although it, 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 travelers can share time at the social areas, they can also find privacy throughout the yacht. Having, because it's a very large boat in terms of uh, the 16 passengers it carries, so you can always find a private area even outside of your cabin. This is an idea of the buffet, uh, all meals are buffet style, as we mentioned that before on the, on the Odyssey. Um, and travelers can always get back, come back for seconds. Uh, one of the latest uh, to toys we've actually added to the Galapagos Grand Odyssey is the glass bottom Zodiac. Uh, this actually allows travelers that are not keen to snorkeling or, or sea kayaking to be able to, to explore the underwater life of the Galapagos as well. Uh, from the, it's the only small yacht that offers this service. We also have two Zodiacs on board. Uh, these are used for the shore excursions. This is on, all, on board of all of our yachts, actually. Um, we, we have sea kayaks. On the, both the Odyssey and the Grand Odyssey, we have um, eight twin sea kayaks, which means there's one for each cabin, so travelers do not have to wait in line to use the sea kayaks. Other activities, of course, as we mentioned before, are the uh, are the excursions. Now, here we have a, a cooking class that we offered on board, and actually, here's a picture of Sylvia, our customer service uh, uh, representative that is with us today. Um, this is a, an interactive ceviche lesson. 
where travelers have learned to prepare one of the uh, iconic South American dishes, which is, um, in this case, it was made with um, raw fish and uh, shrimp, and which is cooked in lemon, and travelers get to prepare it themselves and then enjoy it. So we're trying to make things interactive on board the boats. This is possible because our yachts are small, 16 passengers only, and the cook and the crew gets to interact with the, with the guests on board. Here we have uh, one, of the, one of the wildlife interaction. Actually, animals do not know that you're not allowed to touch them. Though, uh, in this case, one of the sea lions was trying to take uh, a camera case with them as a souvenir. Because they see us as we see them. You see, they're as, just as uh, curious about humans as we are about the animals we see there. So, yes, you're not allowed to travel, touch animals, but they might decide to touch you, though they're very friendly in, in, in any case, and they're not afraid of humans. Here's um, a wildlife picture of a heron uh, feeding on a baby marine iguana, and it's wildlife at its purest in the Galapagos. You see the survival of the fittest, but what we've tried to do with our fleet of yachts is that you do not have to endure it. On the next slide, we'll have a little bit more wildlife views. Uh, for example, uh, amongst the activities, we have kayaking. Um, as these are sit on board kayaks, and there is always the possibility of a sea lion joining you. And uh, when you're snorkeling, you will get to swim with the sea lions as well. Here we have uh, well, we have full snorkeling equipment on board the yachts. Um, we do not charge for the use of the snorkeling equipment, as Javier mentioned earlier. Uh, Wetsuits, yes, we do rent them out in case it's necessary. Uh, this is usually in the second half of the year between July and December where the water is a little bit cooler. Uh, the first part of the year between December and um, in June, uh, usually snorkeling, uh, wetsuits are not necessary for snorkeling. It really depends on the traveler though. Here, when, we're, we're snor when we're snorkeling, we will encounter several species, among them white-tipped reef sharks. Uh, sharks in the Galapagos um, are actually very tame because there is a lot of food. It's one of the only places in the world when somebody yells shark, everybody runs into the water instead of running out of it. We look at the next slide, we'll find the playful sea lions as we snorkel in the Galapagos. So they will come up to you usually and they'll actually tap your fin or tap your mask and they're very playful actually. So. It's, it's, it is a lot of fun. You don't just get to see the wildlife, but you get to interact with it. And here's a, one of our group of snorkelers, actually. And on the next slide, we have a picture of the viewing from the zodiacs. Because one thing is uh, walking on the islands, another is snorkeling in the waters, and another is coming up close to the reefs where, or with, 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 um, to the rocky areas of the islands that are inaccessible. We actually come by on a zodiac so travelers can get a look at the penguins and where they're nesting. And of course, trying to be um, uh, the least intrusive as possible. Trekking in the Galapagos, you do have to be a little bit fit to walk around the Galapagos Islands, walk in a mile unassisted, be able to go up and down stairs. This is one of the more difficult trails, though this is uh, Prince Philip's steps on um, Hinobase Island. Uh, there are other trails that are more um, easy to walk on. You can, some of them are sand, other are, are on flat ground. So Galapagos is available for travelers of all ages. And if there is an excursion um, that a traveler may not be able to take part in, there is always the opportunity to see the wildlife at another visitor site. So that is, having said that, it, we have travelers of all ages. And as we mentioned, the wildlife is ready to interact in a way that you could not do any other place in the world because they're not afraid of humans, of course, with the respect of not touching all life. You're always in company of a guide as well. Our guides give uh, on-site lectures during the shore excursions and make sure that the Galapagos National Park rules are obeyed, but also that wildlife is interpreted and understood by the travelers. You'll have many great photo opportunities. And we have a, we've actually put up here a, a calendar of natural events in the Galapagos where we will talk about what can be seen on different islands and different times of the year. So in May, we have uh, the activity with the Galapagos frigate birds. 
This is the mating season, and here we'll see the frigate birds inflating their pouch to attract, the, this is the male attracting the female. So every month of the year there's something to see in the Galapagos that is a little bit different than on many, on many other months. Now I see that Javier is joining us. He's going to talk a little bit about the Galapagos calendar of natural events throughout the year and about the different wildlife you can see on excursions. Hello everyone, I'm here again. Okay, I have, I have seen uh, some of your questions that you are having right now. Um, especially there are some questions, how, how do we go to the islands and how can we do it? We have, we have some wet and some dry landings. But first of all, um, we have some boats, small boats that we are carrying all the time while we are visiting the islands. And we use these boats to go to, this, to, the, to the islands. So we just park the, the, the cruise in one part uh, outside of the island and we use these boats just to arrive to the islands. Uh, we have some, uh, depends of the islands, we have some dry or wet, wet landings. That's how we call. That means in some places we have a special roads that we use, so we just park small boats in the, uh, in the roads and we just, we just do the, the wet landing as we call. So we just take the shoes, the normal shoes that we are carrying. And for the other landings that we are having, so we are having dry landings, so this is especially in parts where we, we don't have um, roads, what we do is just we just park on the coast and we just take our shoes and we, it's going to be a dry landing. So in that case, so because I was, I was watching your questions about that, so, so that's um, a main idea to give you that. Okay, I'm going to talk about the, um, the cal calendar of, of, of the natural life that we are having here in Galapagos. So um, that's um, the most favorite part of this presentation for most of the people. So if you are having some questions, I'm going to talk about the special periods of time that we can see some animals, the activities that, uh, that we can do, which places we can see those animals as well. So if you are having uh, questions about the period, of the, the period of time or the animals that can we see, where we can find that, so please feel free to just to write what you, what you are needing. Okay, uh, so as, as, as we see right now in this, in this part, we, we just see the, the hawk, the um, Galapagos hawk that we can, we can find in this, in this picture. Galapagos hawk is a, is, a, is a bird that we can find in the Galapagos Islands. Where we can find that? We have these, these birds, especially we can find these birds in the uh, Floriana Island, we can find in the, in the um, uh, Genovesa Island. Santiago, Bartolomé Island, and also in Isabella Island. So this is a um, loved animal from most of the people who love birds. Okay, here is um, Galapagos climate that we can find. The temperature has, as, as, as you can see in the, in the Excel sheet right now, that is the temperature that you were having the whole year. Um, that's a good question. I was watching also another question. Uh, if it's March, the best period of time, or sometimes you just have some clients who just are, who, who are asking uh, when is the best time to visit Galapagos. It's difficult to answer that question. The, the thing is that uh, we have the rainy season that's like we call the, the winter, winter season, that's how we call it in Galapagos. We, it starts from December until March, April. That's where we're going to have a lot of rain in Galapagos in those months. So everything is going to be green on the island. So it's the best period of time to visit the land areas on, on the island. So if you, are, if you want to see you know, the birds nesting, uh, if you want to see the green life on the island, it's the best period of time. So we just recommend those months for the people who just want to see, especially the animals on the islands. But this is not the best period of time to visit the marine life. That's also amazing in the Galapagos Island. We just recommend the summer period of time, so that's the summer summer season, which is starting in May 
until October, November, so it's the rest of the year. So this is the best period of time because the the current of the of the South Pole comes from for to Galapagos, so it's the water is real cold. Uh, but it's it's it brings a lot of fishes and a lot of whales and a lot of sharks and a lot of animals uh, who can be seen also in, in on the island in that period of time. The temperature, like, like you see in the extra sheets that we are watching right now, so it's the temperature about uh, maximum temperature and minimum temperature and the sea temperature that ha you can recognize. So if you see the months of July, August, September, it's colder than the rest of the year if you compare with the temperature, the water temperature. Okay, um, what about the, the animals? I'm going to talk about some dif different species of animals, so I'm going just to to make a brief description of the animals that we can see, so how you see right now in the in the different pictures that I'm showing you right now. So these are the birds or the animals that you can find in those months. But that doesn't mean that it's only that only can be seen in those months. That that's just to give you an idea what you can find in those months. Especially we have um, a request and also many people ask for these birds. I don't know if you see here in the screen, that's the May. On, in the, it starts on the May of May until October, we have the albatross. The albatross are these big birds in, on the top and the middle. So these are the albatross. Um, we can also find these animals only in the Spaniola Island. When? We can find those animals only from May until October. When we have luck, maybe we can find some of these birds at the end of April and also until the last days of October. So that's where we can find those animals. This is, uh, I, I, I begin this, this part of the presentation with these birds because this is, I, we have a lot of requests of people who just want to see these animals, these birds. And when we recommend this, just when the people just want to, to, to have those animals, we just recommend the itineraries who have Espanola Island from May until October. Okay, the other, the other animals that we are having, so I'm going to show you the um, presentation. These are the giant turtles, as we see in the, the pictures right now. Where we can find those animals in natural habitats, we can find in the Santa Cruz, Floriana and Isabella Island. So we have special places where we can find those animals for the people who just love to those animals. We have also penguins. Where we can find penguins? We have penguins in the Floriana and Bartolome Island. So and also we have we have some penguins in the Isabella Island in the, in, uh, on the bottom of the island. Um, I'm going to talk about the marine iguanas. Where we can find those animals, uh, marine iguanas, we can find uh, these animals in all the islands, especially in Española. We have, we have in Española island, we have a special green and red types of uh, marine iguanas, so it's also famous as that. Uh, we have the land iguanas. Uh, we can find those those animals. Uh, we have those animals in the Plaza and Santa Fe Island, in the natural habitat, and also we have in the Charles Darwin Station in Santa Cruz. We can find those animals uh, as well. Uh, red boobies. These are also famous type of birds that we can find in the, the Galapagos Island. We can find the red boobies in the Genovesa Island. That's the only place where we can find. So when you have special requirements to see those birds, I recommend just to, to see the itinerary of our cruises as well. And you can, you can look for the island Genovesa. That's the only place where you can find those animals. We have also the flightless cormorants. Uh, uh, those animals we can find in the Savela Island. That's the unique place in the Galapagos Island where you can find those birds. So that's uh, for the people who just want to see those birds. You just need to take a look at the itineraries, on the itineraries which has Isabella and Fernandina as well. Uh, um, where we can find the owls. I don't know if we have a picture here, but uh, we have some special Galapagos owls. Uh, where we can find those owls? Uh, we can find in Española and Genovesa. Uh, sea lions. Where we can find sea lions? We have the big colonies of sea lions we have in San Cristobal. 
and Santa Fe. These are the uh, big uh, islands or small. Okay, there are small islands, but you can find the big colonies of sea lions over there. But you can find sea lions in all the, the islands. I mean, Santa Cruz, you can find also in, in Floriana, you can find also in, in Genovesa, you can find in Isabella, you can find all the places. But the big colonies are located uh, on the San, San Cristobal and, and Santa Fe. Flamingos, as we saw uh, the, some pictures also here, flamingos we can find in Santa Cruz, in Floriana, Santiago, Fernandina, and Isabella. So uh, you are having special requirements to see those birds. Uh, we just need to take a look for the itinerary on the itineraries on those for those on those islands. Uh, what I always like to recommend for all the people who who are looking for a special uh, kinds of, of of birds or maybe some species of animals, we always rec we always say that it's not a zoo. <laughs> so sometimes what we have is we have just people who just want to to see those animals and they just pay the, the, the tour and wait. when they don't see that they just want to make a complaint. So we just need to explain all the people that it's not a zoo so it's not, we, we can't guarantee those animals but I just explain uh, the places where we can find those animals in different periods of time. Dolphins, as we saw the pictures, where we can find dolphins. In the itineraries when we, when we cruise from one island to another one, especially especially in the south part, we find some dolphins in the Floriana Trail, Bartolome Trail, and Santiago Trail. So where we are going from Santa Cruz or San Cristobal to those islands, we can we can probably see those 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 fish as in, on the way. Um, frigate birds uh, or specialty birds. There there are people who just love the birds. We, uh, the best islands to to see a lot of birds. We recommend to Genovesa and Floriana and Española are the best places for for that. And also we have Isabel and Fernandina also as a lot of places to to see birds. Uh, for the people who just love the lava formations, uh, we have beautiful landscapes that we are having in Galapagos, and the places where we can find the two species of lava that we are having in Galapagos Islands is Santiago, is Bartolomé, Fernandina, and Isabella. So these are the best places. So when you want something like that, you just need to take take a look at the itineraries where we can find those 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 lava formations. Okay, I'm as you saw the whole pictures right now. So that's uh, animals that we can find. So if you have more questions, maybe you are making right now some questions when, where, and we can answer all the questions. We also have you. You also have our uh, emails. So if you want more information about those periods of time, it's, it's going to do it. Okay, and um, let's talk about. Um, let me just. Yeah. What about the um, checking uh, the land return? When that's um, information that I want to give you for all the people, I, and also I have watching some questions about that. Uh, what about the when we want to return to the island? So how long do we need to to wait in the airport? So uh, it depends. All the cruises they just they just organize the itineraries. We just finalize. Uh, always our our tour with the last visit in the different places that we are having, but we consider it's the best time to be two hours before the plane because sometimes we have some changes on the on the on the itineraries on the on the plane, so we just recommend to be to be two hours before the the plane. Uh, it depends on the flight. We use Aerobel as Sylvia already explained you before. We use Aerobel and we use also Thames. So we just we just arrive in the middle mid, middle of the day in Guayaquil and middle of the afternoon Quito. We just organize the hotel transfer and the transfer also to the different parts that we are having. Um, I'm going to talk about the booking procedure information and tips. That's uh, a good question. Also, I was watching a good question about the tips. What we recommend uh, that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the tips first. That was a big question also. Um, what we recommend is is our recommendation. So it's not a law, or maybe that 
you must do that. But what we recommend is just to, it depends of, of the number of days that you are staying on the cruise, but we recommend from 10, 15, until 20 dollars per day. So that means we just distribute this, this tip for the guide and also for the crew members. So that's what we recommend just that, that you can take into consideration about the tips that we are leaving for the crew members on, on, the, on the cruise and also for the guys as well. Uh, the booking. Um, okay, that's a good question. Sometimes the, uh, I have seen one question who was asking me uh, how long do I need to book or when can I book a cruise? It depends on the availability, it depends on the period of time, but we just always to recommend uh, to, to check availability first. What we do is just uh, we, we just check availability, we just check uh, which cruise do you want and the type of, of cabin that you are needing. Also, the, the best um, question that I have seen is if we have some uh, cabins which are connected. We have um, on the Grand Odyssey. We have a connected cabins, uh, which are special, specially made for families. And we, when you have those those cases, what we recommend is just to check the suite, and we just uh, we just coordinate uh, the we just check the availability of the Odyssey suite and the standard suite. So we just put those cabins uh, those cabins are together. So we just check the availability of those cabins as well, for specially made for the for the families, but if you, we also have some twins, we also have some matrimonial cabins on, on all our cruises, so we just check of the, of the type of, of, of cabins that you are needing. We have just whole spaces, we always block the spaces for one week, and when we have the confirmation, we just need the deposit and the phone payment just to, to hold the spaces definitely. Um, about the um, the travel packages, the airport transport, domestic flights, it's feel, feel, feel free just to ask what, what you are needing, the special requirements, or if you, ha if you need some special rates for that. Uh, um, the information that you are needing, that is what, what you see here is the passport. The, we just recommend to just to take your passport. Uh, if you have some dietary uh, restrictions, allergies, or medical conditions, it's always better to know first just to to prepare and to be prepared also in the cruises as well. We also have some diet menus in, on the cruises, so that's also a, a good question for other people. As you see here in, in our in our slide, uh, we have the gala, uh, we have, this is our four cruises that belongs to our company. Uh, we didn't talk in this time about the Galapagos Seaman journey and the Galapagos Voyager. The Galapagos Sima journey is our catamaran as well, so we also have some some cruises for four, five days, eight days, eleven, twelve, and fifteen days. And this is this is a this is the best um, cruise if we recommend just to have small tours. So I mean, I, I'm talking about small tours for four days. I have seen one question who was asking for that. If we have a a, a cruise for four days, we do have but we just have in the, on the Seaman journey. And this is, uh, this is more a fir, uh, first class uh, catamaran, and we also have the Galapagos Voyager, with, which is more um, tourist superior class. So and it's, also, it's also made for four days, five days, eight days, and uh, 11, 12, by 15 days. So that was um, our presentation, so feel, feel free to contact us. Uh, under the, reserv uh, under the mail reservations at latintrades.com and travel at latintrades.com. So uh, it will be a pleasure to answer all your questions. So if, if we already answer, I hope that we already answer all your questions. And if you still have more questions, just write us and it will be a pleasure to contact you for more information. It was a pleasure to, to know you. I don't know, Lee, if you have some questions maybe that you want to, to to open right now, maybe if you are having maybe one question about the, the presentation that you are need more specifications, it would be a pleasure to assist you right now. Oh, thank you, Javier. Yes, you know, you've done such a great job of answering the questions and, and weaving them into the presentation. I love the way you did that. There was one question that came in just a few minutes ago um, that I think would be of interest to everybody, and that is, People, um, if people have trouble getting around, if people have trouble moving or maybe aren't so steady on their feet, 
would they be able to go on a trip like this? Um, you mean people who, who, who can walk or something like that? Oh. Maybe they can walk, but they just are a little slow? Okay, we, um, that's a good question. Also, I don't, uh, Marcelo already explained you about that, but it's going to, I'm going to explain you about. We also saw for some uh, orthopedical sticks also on the cruises. We also have that. We have the normal sticks that for the people who, who have problems just uh, to, to walk. Um, it, under request, it's better if we know that first, because sometimes some of the excursions, they are special made for people who just, you know, who are fit just to walk. But if we have problems or if we have people, we, we already know from cases from people who, who can walk a lot, we just, we just make a small excursions for them. Or we just organize that maybe we, they, can, they, can, they can stay in different places where they can see some of the animals or some of the special species on the island. And we just see how we can arrange that. For the people who are not making a snorkeling or something like that, we also have, as, as you saw on the Grand Odyssey, we have a special um, boat for them, and we have a crystal crystal on the on the boat, so it's better for them if they stay on the boat, and we can can we can also see the marine life from the boat, so that's a, a good option for them. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, I think it does. Thank you. And as I said, you did just such a great job of answering the other questions as they came in. So I don't have any others to um, share right now. So I think I'll turn it back over to you. And you can um, share any final thoughts before we um, close. OK, I think Marcel is going to say you good, goodbye for, for all the people. So he's going to come right now. And for me, it was a pleasure also to talk with you. And if you have more questions, it will be a pleasure like we did the last time and we have done it the last times. So it will be a pleasure for, to assist you. Okay, thank you very much and I, I will give you to Marcel. Thank you, Javier. That, that was uh, very interesting, the way you presented the wildlife of the Galapagos. I hope that everybody enjoyed the presentation today. We're really excited that uh, we had a, a very good attendee list. We had some very interesting questions. We hope we answered the, them in the best of our <laughs> ability. Uh, thank you again for joining us. And we really look forward to working together. And we hope we can um, deliver to your guests the, and, and, and important clients the experience of a lifetime. Great. Thank you, Marcel, so much. And uh, thanks to all of you for joining us today. And with that, we will say good day and conclude our webinar. Goodbye, everybody.